Please join me for the call of worship. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. Let us join in singing our processional hymn, hymn 145, Morning Has Broken. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to hear your voice. And we invite you, dear Lord, to speak to us. We invite you to impart wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and guidance by your word and by your spirit. We pray for strength. We pray for your life to enable us, O oh God, to do all that you ask of us, that we may continue our communion together with you in fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for this time of sharing with you. We thank you for the life of Christ. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I welcome you in the name of Christ. Let us now welcome one another. May we stand.
Amen. I'd like to invite you now to, uh, to take the red booklet pad on the end of the pews and to register your name uh, attendance here this morning. And at this time, uh, we have a special guest uh, to, <laughs> not necessarily a guest, but one of our members uh, who will do the children's time. And I've asked uh, Grace Burks if she'd be willing to do it, and she has agreed. And so we invite our young people to come forward, and Grace will lead us in our children's time. Um, so the kids, as they come down, we'll get started. Come on down, please. I know a few of you. I know um, Lauren and know Hannah. And I know several of you, so come on. Uh, is, is this everybody? Oh, come on down. <laughs> Hi, Rosie. How are you this morning? Good morning. How is everyone this morning? How are all of you doing? Um, is this a vacation week for you guys? Oh my goodness, are you excited about your vacation? Wow, no, okay. Well, um, um, what I'm trying to do today is to talk about prayer. Jesus believed in prayer. Did, who, who said prayers this morning? Who said their prayers this morning? Excellent, so um, one thing that Jesus taught is that prayers is important and the um, scripture we're doing today, we'll talk about when he healed the sick, how he took some time to go away and pray. So when we pray, we pray for different things. Um, when you pray, what do you guys pray for? What do you pray for? Please, um, what do you pray for? Pray God, what do you pray for? If somebody is sick, or what, what do you ask God for? You miss your mommy. Anybody else, anything that you might pray for? Okay, so it's not we pray people are sick or um, we're scared, but so God, um, Jesus gives a way we can pray and feel better. So you know, when you're sick, you you um, you, you get well. If you're tired, you rest. So when you um, pray, you find a special place to sit and pray. Um, so do you guys pray at a table or by your beds um, or when you're having your meals. You know, it's a special time. And it's, it's a quiet time usually when you pray. And there are many, many prayers. Um, the important thing is that um, Jesus has given us this special gift that we can be near to him and um, that we can always confide in him. Um, do, does anyone have like a special prayer that they like? Is there a special prayer that any of you like? Any special prayers? Um, I know sometimes when I was growing up, the um, Yes, Jesus Loves Me and different songs, I'd use them as prayers. And um, when you sit and pray, do you pray with your mom and dad? Great. Uh, so today what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, just um, thank the Lord Jesus that we are together. Each of us are together. And I'm just going to ask one of you to um, say a prayer just to thank God for everything. And um, Lauren, would you be willing to lead us in prayer? Um, I want to. Uh, well, both of you. Both of you want to come over? You want to come over here? You can share just what you can share the prayer. Here, here's it. Okay, so both of you can say a prayer. We just bow our heads. So, yeah, so you and Rosie can say a prayer together. How is that? You got it? Dear God, let our children lead us in prayer. Uh, <laughs> Let's pray, God, for this day and every day. Amen. We have the candy time, so come on over. <laughs> yes, just help yourselves. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got your candy, everybody. Show us
Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapters 40, verses 21 through 31. The reading is found in the Bible in your seats, beginning on page 620. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of the world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown. No sooner do they take root in the ground. Then he blows them on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. 
Who created all of this? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of earth, ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me for the responsive reading found in the hymnal, page 859, and we'll read Psalm 147, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord returns the number of stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our God and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. Our second reading this morning I found in the New Testament epistle book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. This can be found in your pew Bible on page 997. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all of this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now join in singing our next hymn, hymn 623. Here, O my Lord, I see thee.
The New Testament Gospel reading is found in the Gospel of Mark. We read chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. And in the Pew Bible, if you wish to, to read along, you'll find us page 867, the Gospel of Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, told her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait, wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. The word of the Lord. One of the keys to successful ministry, I believe, is prayer. And this reading is perhaps just one example Uh, of Jesus retreating to the wilderness, into the mountains, in a solitary place, alone, to pray. And I've noticed in reading and observing his life, this pattern of ministering to people and then retreating off into some solitary place to pray alone to God. And I think there is a correlation when it comes to his prayers and his ministry. And the reason why he was so successful in drawing people, he invited God in this process of ministering to the broken people of his day. And what a success he was. And it was because he prayed. Therefore, I believe that one of the most vital tools we have as a church is to pray. We may have all of the books, we may have all of the the wisdom, the know-how, maybe we have gone to school and we know all that there is to know about the Bible and about God and about church business and church operations. We may know all of the ins and outs about what it is that we should be doing as a church. But I believe that the main power behind any ministry is the need to pray. There is a need, at least from my understanding in reading about the life of Jesus, it seems to be that the two are connected. There's a correlation between his prayers and what he was able to do as he went about from villages and he have gone from town to town 
to minister to people, and what a success he was. But not only in Jesus' ministry, but as we look at the early church, even, as we read through the book of Acts, we see the same pattern. And the disciples who spent three and a half years with Jesus Christ, watching and learning from him, seem to have adopted the same approach to ministry. They came together to pray. And so I believe there is a message for us today in terms of church, in terms of ministry, and in terms of church growth and expanding our influence. I believe it requires prayer. You've noticed it's been now, this is perhaps the third Sunday, we're talking about prayer. And so it is our theme, it seems, for this period of, um, as we go into the Lenten season, and I would like to emphasize the need for it, not just for particular individuals, but for all of us. It is a privilege to go before God, to go before the Father, to go before God, and to state our concerns. That is a privilege. It is a privilege to do that. You know, in the Old Testament days, um, they had priests, high priests, and the priests had a special operation. And the priests, had to work as mediators, mediators between the people and God, and to speak on the behalf of the people, and to do certain functions on the behalf of, of, of the community, of the Israelites. But now, because of what Christ has done, and we don't, of course, we do not have the time to teach a lot about what has you know, how we've gotten to this point where we now have the privilege individually to go before God as a priest and to state our concern, to state our worries, and to express our joys. We have a privilege to go to the one who has created the entire universe who has all of this power, this tremendous power to create. Think about that. The one who has all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge, all of the ability to do the kinds of things to bring wholeness and health and joy and peace to life. That is a privilege. That is a privilege. To go before God on my own. Every single one of us can do that. It is not something that is specially, that is especially uh, set aside just for clergy, or just for pastors, or just for ministers. This is for every single person who sits on the pews. Everyone has this privilege. And so I want to emphasize that because Jesus Christ made it possible. He made it possible. And we could learn much about prayer, but then there needs, uh, there needs to come a time, it needs to come a time where we need to pray. We need to pray in our personal life. We need to set aside, as Jesus did, set aside time to pray, 
to God. So this is one of the reasons I've, uh, I've asked Jane Easton to offer this study, this um, Bible study series on prayer. Too busy not to pray. <laughs> It is, it is the most vital tool we have, it's the most vital tool that we have as a church. If we wish to make, an, um, to make an impact, an influence on the community in which we live, I believe it begins with praying to God and asking for God's guidance, asking for God's direction, asking for God, God's help. So the early church was also our example. It says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, speaking about the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They devoted themselves to praying, devoted themselves. And if you wish to see the results of what the early church did in their day, read the book of Acts, read about what really happened. The church was growing in leaps and bounds, multiplying daily, the scripture says, at least for a period of time while the church was in prayer. They are our example. If we wish to see a growing church, it begins with this very simple practice to pray. Why prayer? Why do we, why must we pray? Well, I believe I've answered the question. Because God created all of this life and he has placed us here in this world. But we must invite God to be a part of what we do. We must invite God into the human affairs of life. He must be invited. I share with the early service this morning, you know, this need for praying because it invites God. God responds when we invite him to respond. God expects that we would reach out to him, that we would consult him, that we would speak to him about the concerns of life. So prayer invites God into our human affairs. And God will not intrude into our lives until we invite him. God will not intrude. It is not God's way to intrude in people's affairs. That's what I have gathered from the reading. Think about myself, if you were to invite me to your home, and if I decided to just and if you did not invite me to your home, if I decided to just walk on into your house and just help myself to the food in the fridge, to use your stove and to use your bathroom and to use your, your bed and to do anything I want to do or I wish to do, how would you feel about that? 
I can just walk on in any time, day and night, day or night, and just help myself to your home. I can just go into your bank account and just draw anything out I wish and just use what I'd what I like to use for myself. What I'm saying is that God is respectful, that God is, is not going to intrude until we invite him into our lives. Do you remember the scripture? Have you ever read Revelation 3.20? Jesus speaks. He's speaking to his people and he says, I stand at the door and knock. I knock at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and commune with that person. God is respectful. But you know what? We must invite him. We must invite God. And that is exactly what prayer does. Prayer invites God into our human affairs. And as individuals, we invite God to be a part of the crises that we engage every day. But even as a church, as Asbury, we can invite God, we should invite God to be a part of the affairs that goes on within Asbury United Methodist Church. But God will not intrude. It is not the way of God to be rude and to intrude in people's affairs until we invite him. And you can see this pattern throughout, through both the Old and the New Testament. People implore and invited God and asked for God's help. And God would hear the prayer and then God would respond. So I'll leave you with that thought. That it is a privilege. And, and let me say, it isn't because God doesn't want to be involved. God wants to be involved in our lives. But God will respect the affairs of every person's life. If we invite God here, he will come, but he knocks. He knocks at the individual's doors and he's knocking at our door as a, as a community, as a church. He wants to come in, he wants to help. God wants to provide for us. He wants to serve us. But let us invite him. And this is why I am calling for every person I am calling for every single person and expect that we would pray. Because the more people that we invite, just like the early church, the more of uh, people that got, the, when they came together, it seems more things happened. The influence of things increased. An example is all through scriptures. So what an opportunity to learn from this class that Jane is offering, to learn about how prayer affects our lives. What an opportunity. And perhaps all of us may not be able to attend because of the time of this class, but we also have an evening class. Everything is related to prayer. So even if you come to um, Lindsay Webb's um, study as well, he chose the nails. Still, you will get to learn something about prayer and about this life that God is calling us to live. So I'll say no more. We will end this and conclude this message today because I like that. I would like for this thought to linger in your minds that God is inviting us, that we must invite God. And the way that we invite God is that we must choose to pray, each and every person. Amen.
Amen. What a privilege. At this time, um, I'd like to extend this moment for joys and concerns, if there are any. I'd like to recover Rebecca McConnell's aunt to get better and recover. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask for prayers for my father-in-law, Richard, who was admitted last night with pneumonia. Yeah, I had a friend that came, called me the other day and asked me if, uh, if I would put her brother in prayer for me. Her name is, his name is Peter, and she asked if I would bring him to church today. He has tests tomorrow. I like to keep uh, son, my brother-in-law in prayer, um, Rich Nye. Uh, they're in Toronto, and uh, he's had, which seems simple, gallbladder and stuff, but it's all turned out pretty bad. And he's gone through the same thing, a couple of us here with bladder cancer, and, uh, you know, he's uh, been in a lot of pain, so we'll keep him in our prayers. Prayers for Jamie Carmesio and the family. I probably mispronounced the last name. Many of us know her as the waitress from Moe's Diner. Uh, she passed unexpectedly at 39 years old uh, four days ago. You still don't know why. There are many of us who know people who are in need of healing. Those that are going, undergoing surgery this week, we pray for them especially. We pray for those who have cancer, um, who are dealing with chemotherapy. Um, we pray for those who, are, who have the flu. This flu is really bad, and people are dying from this flu. I have a daughter who they said didn't have the flu, but I think it could be the flu. And she, it's taking so long for her to get well. And I pray for Ori, who has experienced the same thing with pneumonia. So there's so many that we all know that we need to pray for. And all of us, if we all do it together, then hopefully these people will get well. Amen. It's a joy for us to be uh, hosting our granddaughters for the weekend. They have a, a bright smile on our faces when we have that opportunity. We thank God for that. Okay. Amen. Well then, let us pray. Heavenly Father, many are going through a time of crisis, with sickness and ill health, we ask for your healing hand, and we ask for your presence. We ask for your peace. We ask that you would visit family members. We ask that you would be with those who are struggling, O oh God, with bodily, bodily conditions whether they be in pain. We ask God that you will begin a healing and a restoring and a renewing of loved ones. We pray that you would visit the hospital. We ask your presence to be there and to restore and to heal. We ask that you would use doctors 
nurses in the aid of restoring and bring about restoration to broken bodies. We pray that medicines, that patients are, may use, will restore and help and renew and begin to work restoration in their bodies. We know, Lord, that all healing comes from you and that you have placed this healing within nature itself. Even within our bodies, you have placed your healing. Even as a natural way of restoring that which is broken within us. And so, Lord, we pray that you allow this natural healing that every person, that each body has, to begin to renew and to restore and to build and to strengthen, strengthen, to bring wholeness to each person. Help us to acknowledge, help us to recognize that all healing comes from God because you place it in nature. Even the earth itself has the capacity to renew and to be restored. We thank you, Lord, for this gift of healing and restoration. And Jesus showed this healing, O oh Lord, in his ministry, going from one village to the next, from one town to the next, touching lives, because you have placed healing in life as a part of life. So God, we thank you for the doctors. We thank you for the medicines. We thank you for everything that represents your healing on earth. We give you thanks for your spirit who renews us and enables us, O oh God, that we may do your work. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for the great joy that you've given us. We thank you for the joy of family, coming together and fellowshipping and loving one another. This we pray in your precious name. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. this time we will receive our offering. Let us prepare our hearts and mind to give. Amen.
thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Now we give to you. We ask that you bless this offering and let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. Please join me for this time of communion, page 12, as we prepare. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please join me on page 13, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is broken for us. Amen. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for us for the remission of sin. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine 
<clears throat> make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 I'd like to call forth our servers this morning who will be assisting me with the communion. Amen. Okay, you may receive the communion. You may kneel for to receive the communion. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken. This is the body of Christ broken for you for healing and restoration. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness and the pardon of sin. You may receive the communion. Is there anyone we've missed who hasn't received communion? Is there anyone? Okay. Um.
thank you, God, for this time of worship and service and fellowship. And now, Lord, as we prepare to depart, we pray that you go with us. We pray that your protection will be all around us to keep us safe from all harm and danger. We thank you, Lord, for this time of gathering. Again, we thank you for being with us. In Christ's name, amen. God has brought us here. God now sends us forth. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service Sunday morning from Asbury United Methodist Church located on Franklin Street in Watertown. Asbury United Methodist Church.